Hey, it's Kristen Cooper, your mortgage gal here, just jumping on for a quick video. Big question that I get often is, should I continue to save or should I buy now? A lot of people think that you have to have 20% down to avoid mortgage insurance for it to make financial sense. And so that's what we're gonna look at today. Should I put 10% down that I have today, which you could put as low as 3% potentially if you're a first time home buyer, you don't need 20% down. But let's just say somebody has 10% and they're on their way working towards 20% because once you hit that 20% of the purchase price as a down payment, you no longer have mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is an additional payment included in your total payment that's required when you put less than 20% down. It's an insurance that's paid that protects the lender in case you default. But that mortgage insurance can be in the form of a monthly payment. You could actually pay a fee to get rid of it. There's different ways that we can address it. And depending on the program that you're in and all of your specific um, indicators, such as your credit score and things like that, that mortgage insurance could be very minimal. And so a lot of people think that they have to wait, but let's look at the numbers. Let's see what makes sense. My goal is always gonna be to make sure that we're looking at the most beneficial ways to save you the most money. So what we're looking at first is rent versus own. And one thing that I just wanna to touch on real quick is, should I continue to rent or should I buy? You know, a lot of people have questions around the current market, um, interest rates, where are we going? I don't wanna pay that high of a rate, but there's a huge opportunity that's being missed. And so I really wanted to address that. And then we're gonna look at the 10% versus 20% down. So what you're looking at here is 600,000 purchase price, assuming just 10% down, assuming a rate of 7.125. Now reach out to me, we'll look at your specific rates. It's gonna be based on your, your specific circumstance, but let's just use this in our example for right now. Um, and then you're looking at a total payment of roughly 44.10. That includes property taxes and insurance. Now there's benefits that you have to consider when you're buying that you don't get when you're renting. So you're gonna have a standard tax deduction whether you buy or not. So what we're looking at is just the additional state, 10% uh, state benefit that you get in California. Uh, you may actually get a bigger tax advantage depending on how you file your taxes if you are gonna be filing um, and get an additional itemization so that you can use additional interest. It may even be higher than that, but I'm gonna err on the side of being conservative. So that tax benefit, what that means is, yes, your payment's still 441058. However, you have two options when you're buying. You can wait till the end of the year and get this tax benefit, and it's about $332 per month based on this scenario. So times that by 12, that's how much you would get more back on your tax return that you wouldn't if you were renting. Or you can go in and change with your employer your deduction so that you get more monthly, so that you have more money in the bank to be able to afford a little bit higher payment for now. So those are different ways that you can use this tax benefit. You also have what's called your principal paid. I call it forced savings because you're kind of forced to save, meaning yes, you have to make your 4410 monthly payment and then the lender pays your taxes and insurance when they're due from that payment. But part of that 4410 is going to also have what's called your principal payment, meaning part of your payment is paying down your loan balance each month. So we're showing here $431 that is gonna be paid down each month from your principal that is now your savings in the home. The difference between the value of your home and what you owe is your equity, which is your savings in the home. So each month when you make your payment, part of that goes into money that's now your equity, your savings, that's your principal. So when we're looking at rent versus own, we really need to be looking at this net worth or net payment that we're looking at 3646 versus rent. So if you're paying $3,000 a month for rent and you buy this home, really it's only $646 additional cost versus renting. Yes, you're still paying 4410, so you have to make sure that you're comfortable making that payment and be able to afford it, but you're gonna get that tax incentive. So really it's $332 a month, depending on if you get the tax return um, incentive at the end of the year or change your deductions. And then you're also investing into the equity of your home. So that's how we get to comparing the two tax versus rent versus the ownership. Now, what I like to show here is and there's your tax benefit in five years, how much you're gonna be saving for that additional tax benefit that you get, that's your money. But what you wanna look at here is rent versus owning. Now this is assuming just a standard 5% rent uh, increase year over year, which actually it's a little bit more in California and other areas. But if you continue to rent, that's how much you're paying for your landlord's mortgage. Versus if you own, this is in 15 years, how much you would have paid down in your principal, meaning the equity that you now have in your home that's yours. This doesn't take into account appreciation, how much your home value goes up. This is just simply, if your home never went up in value in 15 years, you now have $138,000 
um, that's in the home versus how much you would have you know wasted in 15 years this is the number one way that most people are able to start building wealth through home ownership and that's why i'm super passionate about it is because a lot of people think that you can't you know build wealth because you can't save your way into this type of return if you were to start saving today and you know 15 years to get this return and you already need a house over your head i mean you can't save your way into that that amount of um, net worth so that's why it's super powerful when we're looking at um, the different numbers and kind of how we're working into this so the other thing that i want to look at here is going to be um what are um we're going to be looking at net worth and what we're going to be looking at now is going to be a um, looking at should i do the 10 percent down or should i wait and put 20 percent down so now we're going to compare now if we do the 10 percent down so we just went over that first option so we're looking at 600,000. we put 10 percent down your payments 4410. well what if we wait and then put 20 percent down well let's just assume it's going to take you two years so to make up that additional $60,000, if you save $2,500 a month, it's gonna take you two years. So let's say that you wait for two more years until you have that 20% down. Well, now the home price is gonna go up. And I'm being conservative saying 640,000 because interest rates are dropping and are continuing to drop. I think within the next couple of years, we're gonna see them come down quite a bit. And when rates drop, housing prices go up. So last time we saw rates drop um, and it goes in increments, but you're looking at a 10% plus appreciation when interest rates go down because there's more buyers that are driving up the prices on the homes because whenever you have more offers on a home, it drives that price up. So if that's what we're looking at, let's just say now you're paying 640,000 for that same exact home. So you're waiting to put 20% down. You now are paying 640 and I think it's gonna be higher, but I'm being conservative. So now that means your loan amount's gonna be higher even if you're putting just you know that 20% down the 20% down A is gonna be higher because now that 20% is based on 640,000, not 600,000. So you're gonna to have to save even more to get to that 20% down. And you're gonna owe more because now your loan amount is based on a higher purchase price. And let's be nice and say, you know, interest rates have gone down. So let's take that into effect. Say, so yes, I'm paying more for the home, but interest rates went down. So yeah, true, your payment at the end of the day is gonna be less, 4246 versus 4410 if you were to buy today with a higher rate. But you also got to take into account that $36,000 that you're paying for rent times two for two years that you just paid as well. So you're paying two years of rent that you have no return on versus it, and now you're paying $640,000 for that same home that would have been $600,000. So you're going to need more for the 20% down. You just wasted the $72,000 in rent for the last two years that you paid to save less than $200 a month. So let's look at the alternative. So let's say, let's say that you bought today and keeping everything in, in um, perspective here, that you're still continuing to save. So let's say that you said, you know what, Kristen, I'm gonna go ahead and buy today um, at the 10%. So I'm gonna buy 600,000, loan amounts is 540,000, and my payment's gonna be 4410, but we know that interest rates are gonna drop. So when interest rates drop, let's say to 5.25 in the future, now you can see your payment's gonna be 36, 86, 90. So your future payment is gonna be much lower. So your rate, your, your rate and your payment are gonna be higher today, but we all know interest rates are gonna come down in the next couple of years. Fed's number one focus, bring inflation down. Every single time inflation comes down, mortgage interest rates come with it. So you may have this rate today, but in the future, you're gonna be able to go into a lower interest rate. Um, assuming a 5.25, you can see that now your payment is going to go down to 36.86 versus the 44.10. Yes, you have to be able to afford the higher payment until the rates drop. But you could see that if you were to wait until you had 20% down and then rates drop to 5.25, because your payment, you're paying more for the home, your loan amount's higher. So you're getting the same rate in the future because rates are going to be the same at the time that you refinance. But look at ultimately your payment's going to end up higher. So whereas here, sure, your payment's gonna be lower for a couple years if you put 20% down, if you were to you know, buy with the 20% down versus 10, but eventually your payment's gonna end up being higher long-term. So what if you purchase the home today and you say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase that home today with the 10% down. What if that additional $2,500 that you were going to pay for the next two years, you still applied that to the mortgage? So what we're going to be looking at here is if you were to buy today 10% down and you were to invest that additional $2,500 a month that you were going to be saving so that you had 20% down, 
This orange shows how much, and let's just assume that you're getting a 4% rate of return on that money. There's a lot of high yield savings right now that you can get higher than 4% if you invest. So being conservative, let's just say that you're getting a 4% return on that money. And so you put $2,500 for the next two years and you invest that separately from the mortgage. Well, you can see here how much you're gonna have in assets by investing that with the interest. And then this is your mortgage. So yes, your mortgage that you have here, the equity is gonna be less if you put 10% down because you owe more. But if you were to continue and invest that $2,500 a month for two years, you could see your total amount that you would have 817,000 that you would have as net worth that you'd be looking at in 15 years. So and this is taking, not saying that you have to invest $2,500 beyond the two years. This is just saying if for the first two years, you just invested $2,500 into a savings account that you're getting a 4% rate of return of appreciation on it, and you bought with only 10% down, how much your net worth would be. Versus if you were to wait and buy with 20% down, so now you have 20% down in your home, so you're not saving additional money beyond that, you're just now saving the $2,500, and in two years, you're gonna buy a home and put 20% down. Look at your net worth. So this is even assuming that you have mortgage insurance with putting 10% down because it's so affordable. Take it a step further and say, okay, what about in the future when rates drop? Well, now you could see that you have your investment, you have the lower rates, you have how much is in here, we get you in a lower rate, better terms. All scenarios show that if you buy today and put just 10% down versus 10, the 20%, that it makes sense and you're gonna gain more wealth and accumulation by using this reinvestment strategy to purchase today get a lower price, invest the money, get a greater return than if you were to wait and save money. So I think it's really important that you're working with a professional that understands money, concepts, compound interest, rate of return, and is helping you make the best decision when you're looking at purchasing because a lot of people thought that they had to wait that I've worked with. And then once of course they see this, they buy, now they're gonna be in a great position, they're gonna earn more wealth. So should you wait to put more money down? Most scenarios, no. There are a few circumstances where it may make sense. If you're living with family rent-free and you could stay there, sometimes that may make sense and we'll look at that specifically for you. My job is to be able to provide you the information and the content and the numbers so that you could see visually why it makes sense for you to buy A in this market if you can afford to buy even where rates are. You're gonna end up gaining so much more net worth. Most cases you're looking at 100 to over $500,000 more that you're gonna gain by buying today versus waiting until interest rates drop or in the future to buy. So it's really important that we look at those numbers for you. This could be the difference of you being able to afford college for your kids. This could be the difference of you being able to retire without a mortgage payment by getting in sooner. So it's really important to understand the numbers and the math to be able to make an educated decision based on the market give me a call let's look at your specific numbers to make sure you have the right information and that you're making the right money decisions for you and your family